<laughs> My name is Rex, and I'm a dog, and give me your cash. Oh, hello! Oh, hello! Hi there. You startled me. I didn't see you come in. I am Rags. I'm a dog. I made a video. And you're here. So, hey, I, I'm just saying. The natural progression of events at this point is for you to watch the video that I made. Kenobi, the TV show. It's been on my brain for a bit. I feel like even after all the talking that I've done, there's still more I want to say. I feel, I just feel like I have to let some things out because I hate this show so much. So I found a video, and the guy who made the video thinks Kenobi's very, very good, and I think, I think this, I think this show is awful. So let's see what he has to say. I recorded myself responding to his video. Maybe you'll enjoy it. I certainly hope so. Um, just to let you know, I, I did a little, I, I did a little mistakey wakey when I recorded. I, my volume was way lower than the video's volume, and now I. I won't do it again now that I know it, so I kind of balanced them in post, and it, it'll be, I think it'll be okay, I'm just letting you know beforehand. Now that you've been warned, let's delve right in. Alright, let's get into it, how magical. Alright, this is final verdict on Obi-Wan Kenobi, and the actual problem, spoilers, a rant, could be true. Maybe I don't know what the actual problem is, maybe... I have simply been distracted by all of the continuity errors and the canon breaks and the character assassinations and the, the lack of logic and the, the abandonment of cause and effect and the incompetence of so many characters. Maybe those things have distracted me from what the actual problem is. It's very possible. I am not perfect. But I'm damn close. Copyright holders do not have exclusive rights over their content. Copyrighted content can be used by someone besides the copyright holder as long as the use is highly transformative. This is called fair use. Do not claim this video. Uh, definitely lower tier in terms of the fair use disclaimers. Definitely fair use. I like the little VHS effect. I like that the VHS effect is decent. Like we have, like he, he got the style decent. Um, I don't like this icon here. This should have been, I think, at the top, going over the top like this. But this wording is really, um, I'm not going to say juvenile. Clunky, right? I don't like it. I don't like it. it this is a low, low t high points for style because it definitely fits in. If you casually glanced at it, you might think that it was real. But we're just having fun here. We're having fun here. We're having fun here. All right. Yeah, he's got the VHS. And that's the thing. Moses Ingram. Oh, wait. Why does he still have the... He still has the VHS effect. Oh, I guess this is like a preview of what's to come. He's really excited about what's to come. This is like our, this is our sample. This is what you're in store for. This is what you can get excited for. Moses Ingram getting racist messages is a problem and she shouldn't get them. But you know what's sure. a bigger problem? What's a bigger problem than Moses? Here, she plays Reva. Reva's a horrifically poorly written character. Uh, that makes no sense whatsoever, and she's a clown person who does very f unintentionally funny things, and she yells silly. I have no thoughts on the actress whatsoever. It's hard to separate the actress from the character when the character is written so incredibly um, poorly and silly. You wonder what 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 is the direction of this uh, of this actress? Is she doing what she needs to be doing? Is she playing a particular character the way that the director wants her to? I I. I have no idea. I don't know what else she's in. I have, my issues are certainly not with the actress. It's with the character. So uh, we, we, it's important, I guess, we latch on to in our 19-minute final verdict on Obi-Wan. Our stinger to really pull you in to watching the rest of the video is that Moses Ingram got racist messages on uh, the internet. Shock and horror, I'm certain. I hope she will be okay. Assholes like the quartering Ooh. Ben, Shapiro, ben Shapiro, neurotic... And critical oh, he said neurotic instead of nerdrotic. That's very clever. It's like his like his name, organized chaos. It's very clever because chaos is not organized. You see, it's chaos. It's not dog bites tier clever, of course, but it's it's you know, yeah. strive for greatness. Drinker. Critical drinker. Maybe, maybe saying it's bad. I don't feel like you need to. Um, do you have to say here? Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I don't feel the need to tell my audience that sending racist messages to actors and actresses 
is bad. I don't feel the need to have to say that because I don't feel that I have racists in my audience. Maybe just a lot of averages. Enough people watch me that some of them are inevitably going to be racist, as with every audience of, of a particular size. But I don't know. If someone's being racist to the point where they're sending racist messages toward actors and actresses, is telling them that that's bad, is that gonna... I wonder if that's gonna change their mind. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's almost like default. Maybe I feel like it's not something you have to be saying. Huh. But defending it, I want to point out. Defending it, I would love. T I would, I would love to hear the clip or see the 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 source on the critical drinker and nerd erotic and all these people. I would love to get the source on them defending the racist messages, because a a part of me thinks that they they probably aren't doing that. Okay, I, I'm just going to go out on a limb. Maybe someone could prove me wrong, and in this video we'll see a clip or a, a sound bite. But um, until then, consider me skeptical. Ben Shapiro and the quartering definitely didn't say it's bad. This or I, oh, that was that's the, we're done with the stinger. That that's the that's the preview. Stick around, guys. You'll get more of this incredible commentary if you stick around. You definitely you generally want to put we still have the VHS effect that's odd I hope that doesn't go on the whole video generally you want to put the really good stuff the really mmm the really meaty interesting uh, stuff up at the front so that people feel the, the desire to who's like oh how, how did we arrive here I, I cannot wait to see a more of this kind of commentary but um the idea that you don't by not saying that sending racist messages is bad like me, I would assume that everyone just knows that bad that that's bad, right? That's that's worse. It is worse to not tell your audience that racism is bad than it is to actually do the racist thing. I don't know. That ah, I don't know. I don't think that passes the the smell check. The the taste the taste test. The smell check taste. I feel like it's the other way around, right? Doing the racist thing is definitely worse than someone telling their audience racism is bad surely it's the other way around right because you want to avoid doing the thing organized chaos video is brought to you by gems art studio this video is. is also brought to you by viewers like you oh, thank like the you thing. brought to you by viewers like you thank you huh. it's overstated it's welcome stylistically i understand it being on the on the warning for the fair use thing totally understand that and I'm for it good stylistic decision I feel like it's gone on too long though I hope the rise of hey it's gone thought about doing something different uh, this time around let's do a quick let's do a quick assessment of the landscape what do we have we have we have Grogu we have baby Yoda and Darth Vader of course we have a a what looks to be a black widow is that like a like a popcorn bucket from the movie theater? Is that a popcorn bucket from the I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna look I'm gonna look that up real quick. Oh my goodness, I'm back. I've hit record again. I just I didn't know if I'd find it or not. It's true. That I I thought at first it might be a sort of um like a like a cylindrical plastic case for maybe a figurine. It is a pop it is a a promotional popcorn bucket for Black Widow. That's incredible. This is just a random eBay listing for it. That's how I found it. That's incredible. That's unbelievable. Jesus Christ. It's like the most consumer thing you could get is as a backdrop for your YouTube video. A a Disney Marvel Studios. Well, it's got Taskmaster on it. What an incredible villain that was. The the oh, what a what a wonderfully written film. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's hilarious. I think that's hilarious. It's a it's a promotional popcorn bucket right behind the BB-8. At least we got Wally. That's cool. That's all right. He has Boba Fett shirt. Posture's terrible. I'm doing since I did this whole Obi-Wan Kenobi series and the series ascended. I thought, let's go ahead. Can we turn up the quality? Why do I have my quality low? Ooh, it goes up to 4K. There's no reason to there's no reason to record these in 4K. Let's be honest. I do the most I do is 1440p, 60 uh, frames per second. 4K for this is oh man. You don't need 4K for this. Calm down. 
good for you though i guess for having that you know that umph that creative drive and do a video where i just talk about my opinions towards the series um i usually reserve this for it's a very unfortunate voice you need to work on that my my creative um advice to you would be to to work on your speaking voice um you are of course you only have one voice however you can change it the way that you speak your inflections your tone uh the, the scratchiness that you may or may not have you can change that with practice you have to think about it and you have to be conscious of it but you can do it you have a i'm doing this to try and encourage you you have a horrific speaking voice it's really awful change it work with it exercise it you can do it don't give up for the uh podcast and i'm still gonna do a podcast on it except that time i'm gonna be joined by my best friend george and oh, bobby yeah. quarters george and bobby yeah george and bobby i love george and bobby they're great i'll be there if, if george and bobby are gonna be there then consider me there as well write me in don't even pencil me in ink that shit i will be there if george and bobby are there and that'll be on the podcast channel on uh next tuesday next tuesday so okay ah oh, damn i missed it did i miss it i think i did damn ah oh, forget about the pen thing then oh the link I is in miss, i hate missing george and bobby but i guess something something must have popped description up. box yeah but this is gonna be like my first impressions and then in that okay. podcasting i will have had a chance to watch it again with my family and have a bit more concrete opinions okay i would be curious I wonder if you're, I would rather, I'm going to be honest, I'd rather hear from your family than you, but, you know, we get what we get, and that's okay. So, just a couple hours ago, I finished watching Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 6. All right. And I episode. have to say. Yeah? Oh, I'm, oh, that, that's an unfortunate pause. Um, no, this, actually, this fate, this is fortuitous. Fate has blessed me. So, this is, this is my reaction to Obi-Wan Kenobi the show. This face right here, that's my reaction to it. Or maybe maybe I'd have more of a depressed face, but the the sort of that kind of thing. Like, oh, what's that over there? Ugh, it's a Kenobi show. Ugh, why is it so high? Ugh. That was a damn good episode. I Woo! It's a damn good episode. Episode 6 was damn good, guys. It's damn good. I I can't wait to hear why. I think that's that's half of my interest is wondering what is it? What is it about that episode? Really, the show in general. But that episode, what did you like? Because I can make guesses. I'm going to assume that he loved the Kenober. Uh, Kenober. <laughs> He's trying to say Kenobi and Vader, and it came out as Kenober. The Kenober and Vody 1 fight. The Kenober and Vody 1 fight at the end. I bet he loved that, and he loved when they talked to each other, and Obi-Wan let him go. I'm curious if he'll get into that. I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess that no, he does not explain why Kenobi allowed Darth Vader to continue living and terrorizing the galaxy for a decade or so uh, afterwards. I think that's a bit of a bit of a damage to the character to oh to the uh, I have watched a little bit of this, by the way. Thus, my previous dislike. I got, I got a number. I got into it pretty quick. I think I watched the first eh, two minutes or so. Knew that it was a gold mine, and I, I, I was, I had enough to dislike it after the first two minutes. But you know what? Maybe he will redeem himself. Maybe he will turn the dislike into an I like. I don't know. I have issues with this series, but overall, I think. Oh, what would I guess his issues are? If you are a total consumer who buys <laughs> Marvel Studios Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn buckets, if you're that level of consumer, what did you not like about Kenobi? Oh, if I was going to guess, I would guess that he didn't like... He's going to talk about pacing in general... This is my guess. I don't know what he actually doesn't like, but my guess is that he doesn't like some of the pacing in general, and he doesn't think that... Mm, I guess he, he might point out some inconsistencies between this and A New Hope, and then what, what that creates, maybe. But I'm going to stick with pacing. Pacing is... It, it can often be sort of this ambiguous sort of thing that you speak to, and you never have to give examples of, but you could say, ah, oh, the pacing was kind of off, and... 
That's that's my guess. I think he's going to be totally on board with everything storytelling-wise and character-wise. I think he's going to be totally on board. I think it was very, very good. Very, very um, good. Just to be clear, I think Kenobi is, like, shit tier. We're talking... We're we're talking in that two out of th two with five being average, right? We use the scale of one to ten, five being average, ten being perfect, and you, the lowest you can go is, I guess you can't be at zero because a zero out of ten doesn't even qualify as being the thing. Um, but yeah, this is in that two to three range, like a lot of sludge stuff is between the continuity breaks, pretty much every character being assassinated, just a total abandonment of logic and sense. This is in that two to three range. Uh, it slides down really low. I think this is. I think I'd say this is worse than Boba Fett because Boba Fett, it makes a lot of its own stuff up to ruin, and it only really destroys a little bit. But this really does a lot of damage to Vader, the Empire, to Obi Wan Kenobi, Bail, <laughs> Aunt Beru <laughs> gets a, gets the writing slap in this one, unfortunately. Of course, Reva's awful. The Inquisitors are a joke. Um, yeah, this is. This is in that two to three range, unfortunately. Now, he thinks it's very good. Very, very good. Two varies. Uh, he thinks that this is a good, good show. So we'll see. Maybe he will change my mind. I'm open to having my mind changed. Though I doubt you have the chops to do it. I guess we'll go ahead and go over some of my issues. Ooh. Pretty much all my issues exclusively. Ooh, this is the moment of truth. Was I right? Are In a lot of shots, I feel like the direction is a bit lackluster. Oh, I would not have guessed that. I wouldn't have guessed that because there's some, I think a lot of it's just uninspired. There's not a lot of scenes that, there. I think it's kind of the problem when we talk about shows that come out now from Disney, particularly the last two Star Wars shows, like Boba Fett and this show. There doesn't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be much artistry in it. There's no style to it. It doesn't have that, um, it, it just doesn't, you don't feel like there there was I guess that I think that's a good way to put it. There's not a lot of artistry involved. You don't feel like there's a director who really has this this vision of what they want to do and we don't really see that realized. It's very sludgy and samey samey. There's a few shots that are neat, but a lot of them it's uh, it's meant to be callbacks and I I don't get it. But maybe maybe he'll talk about that, who knows. Um there's lots of things people point out, and they blow it way out of proportion, in my opinion. But there are... I, I'd love to get an example or two. I know, it's, I know you're off the cuff, but it would be nice to get an example. For instance, I think some of the lighting stuff they do with Vader's face is neat. Um, I think that the shot of the, the, the Star Destroyer following the Rebel ship in the last episode is neat. Of course, I'm not going to give it any more, really any points, because it's just ripping off of the... It's just a basic pursuit shot, and ultimately the scene is, the, the visual of the scene kind of falls to the wayside when you consider the implications of what that scene means. It's the scene where the, the, the Empire's incompetence is so, so thorough that it allows both the Rebellion to survive and Obi-Wan survives as a result, and they won't just destroy them both, and they're incapable of destroying this ship right in front of them. When there's no cover or anything to hide behind and they just can't destroy it. it's it's really kind of sad but you know shots like that are are neat you know it's fine you know there are things where i feel like a bit sharper direction could have made it work a lot better i mean that's all things though i uh, obviously i think sharper direction would have helped this show a lot in terms of it would have been nice to have some artistry in this tv show that would have been neat instead of just this instead of just product you know um the big thing lots of people like to point out is, like, the, the Princess Leia capture. Yeah, this was insanely awkward. This should have been cut. This should have been completely cut from the episode, and we should have used the time to explore this chase to have more dialogue or ruminations of Obi-Wan Kenobi. In the precious, precious few little moments that we get of Obi-Wan, uh, in, in, as this show, because as, as I've said before, this kind of has that problem that Moon Knight did. Remember Moon Knight? No, everyone's forgotten about Moon Knight. The first episode of Moon Knight was, it really made us super hopeful about what could be a, a honestly character-focused show that explored someone dealing with their issues and maybe exploring a mystery or an adventure that's sort of small scale. Of course, very quickly turns into super big plot Marvel sludge. 
But much like the first episode of Moon Knight, the first episode of Kenobi really should have spent a lot more time focusing on him as a character, how he feels about things, why he feels certain ways, um, why is his force uh, use diminished, what is he doing, things of that nature. And crap like this, it should just be cut. It is, you don't need to show us how she gets kidnapped in the woods. You really don't. Just just say that she gets kidnapped or just show show them grabbing her putting a bag over her head you don't have to show this awkwardness because we lose right we something is hurting my head right now like i have a thing like a something like maybe a hair is been anyway um uh yeah cut this it's awkward we don't need to see it it damages the show it takes up time first scene it is it looks very wonky and it actually, I think. So you see those cuts. You, you, it's it's the it's the chase sequence thing where once the once the baddies are about to get them, you just cut, and then when you go back, oh, they they have somehow regained distance. How fortuitous for the chasey. I think would have sold a lot better if they maybe used different shots or cut it slightly different. See, like he. Let's let's see. If different shots or cut. Like this guy here, horny boy. Cut it. He is trying to chase Leia and capture her, and he gets right here and he just stops. Slightly differently, so it just looks a little he bit smoother. Her. As it is, it does look very wonky, um, almost kind of slapsticky. That's a, that's a lot of the show because the writers are horrifically incompetent and the director is an idiot. But it's it's not. It's weird. I mean, it is wonky. Um, I feel it's it's but it's a minor quibble. Um, I don't know. Uh, this stuff, it can't, if it pops up throughout the entirety of the show, general incompetence, awkward shots, very strange kinds of chase and semi-action sequences, it, it, it piles up. It definitely, it's not nearly the worst of the issues. The worst of the issues are, of course, the character writing and the, the plot in the characters, kind of the, the foundational stuff you need to have in a show or story. Um, the, this show, Kenobi, gets horrifically wrong, but, yeah. yeah. And it's not at like she's not. At least he recognized something was not good. You know, that's that's something. My bar for him is extremely low. Not captured. She is captured. It's a weird chase, and she's captured. The uh, cave in episode five has like this, like it feels like a set. It has this very. That's like almost all. That's like every place. That's like every place. I'm. You know what? You know what was good about the chase scene? It wasn't a green screen. Maybe something in the back was a green screen, but, but they're like, oh, you're in a forest. Remember in Black Widow, for which he got the Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn bucket, right? That he, that he displays proudly behind him. <laughs> Remember in Black Widow, how, how um, Scarlett Johansson, she's just in the forest. She's just kind of in the woods, and they had to CGI that. You, can't, you couldn't just take someone to the woods and shoot a scene in the woods. You know, at least for this show, they, they went out to the woods. So that's nice that they went to the woods. But yeah, the cave in this episode does look very... It just... Eh. Like, that's just so much of... That's so much of these Marvel shows, though. It's so... It, there's just so much... And I'm not putting down CGI for the sake of it. But a lot of these episodes, I just feel like... Ugh, they, these places don't feel real. And it adds to the unbelievability of these kinds of locations. When I just don't feel like you're in real places. And sometimes it's quite noticeable. Artificial feel to it, and it doesn't quite work for me. Um, there is uh, a couple things in episode four, which I overall is an episode I like. That's kind of like the one where Obi-Wan gets his groove back. And I oh, he I mean, he does for no reason whatsoever. And uh, I enjoyed that quite a bit. But there's two things I noticed in there. I, I would love to hear his thoughts on how Obi Obi-Wan got his groove back. How Because episode four is the episode where early on, he tries to pull like a little knickknack across the table with the force. This little bitty doodad. It's like a washer or a this is a little electronic piece, a little tiny thing. It's basically like an SSD, and he's struggling to pull this SSD towards him. And later in the episode, apparently, he now has a connection with the force that is so titanically strong he can hold back the ocean from pouring into this facility. Uh, 
So I guess it's it's very it's certainly fortunate for him that he was able to become so strong with the force for seemingly no reason whatsoever that is not at all explained. He can just do it. Maybe 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 we'll get into that. That would be cool if we saw him explain. Maybe I missed something. It's very possible I missed something. Or that that don't quite. Also, this scene is shit. It's like, look at the way that he kills the stormtrooper with this bat here. Let's go back and watch them both, okay? Like, that's kind of like the one where Obi-Wan gets his groove back, and I enjoyed that quite a bit. But there's two things I noticed in there that... that Look, watch the... Because he, like, he hits him like a baseball bat. It's like he's hitting him with a don't plastic pole. Don't quite sink. This is a superheated mega... Like, this thing will slice through bodies and doors, and he just, like, hits them like he's got a... I'm saying like a lot, but I think for the most part I am comparing two things. He's hitting them with the prop, which is a plastic stick that's lit up. And it you don't get the feeling that this is actually a lightsaber. When you go back to the prequels in particular, and you see how easily that lightsaber slashes through robots and droids, how it just cuts them to pieces and it goes right through them, how it melts doors. And then you watch this. It's such a sanitized kind of version of what the lightsaber is and what it's supposed to be doing. I, I want to say, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like George Lucas had mentioned one of the reasons he made robots the primary antagonist of the prequels is so that Jedi could absolutely go ham on slicing them up. He could lop off limbs and chop through them, and it wouldn't be gory, of course. There would just be oil and parts and red-hot metal. That's just kind of coming apart. And maybe it was wise for him to do that so we could really see the effectiveness that these lightsabers have uh, against uh, enemies. But here it's like he's hitting him with a plastic pole. Which I understand you can't be super gory, but surely you could stab him or you could do something that isn't so clearly... Eh. The first being um, kind of like this weird slap thing. That Tala does to the stormtroopers. Ah, yeah, I use this for my episode four thoughts video um, here on the channel on dog bites. I thought it was so silly and ridiculous. I used it for my thumbnail. Then again, episode four was so stupid and full of such dumb crap. I had a plethora of options to use for my thumbnail, but you know what? I I sided with uh I I, I sided with that. That's what I went with. I think that going with Leia peeking out from underneath the coat. <laughs> was a little little overdone. I, at least I felt that was too obvious to do because of how dumb it was. She does this weird slap thing uh, where if you actually look, she's like moving their helmets so they can't see. Uh, no, she's not. It's not that she's moving their helmets so they can't see. I feel like that thing would be affixed to their faces securely enough. Um, it's that it's apparently, like I said, give these stormtroopers an Oscar for, the, for the, this this performance of acting as if they're incapacitated from this light push. Like, see? See how when she grabs the second... Sto the, watch the stormtrooper on the left. They're clearly both looking at her as she's doing this. Watch him on the left. Can't watch see. Watch his right hand. See, he's got his gun in his right hand. Oh, he just but drops it, it and, like, throws it away. Instead of shooting her with it, he just drops it. So, that's fortunate. It doesn't work. It looks really weird because they do this long shot on it, this long one shot on it. And it's something that I think would have worked a lot better if you had some like quick cuts that showed like her actually moving the helmet. No, you need what you need to do is you need to have her do something clever. You need to take you need to have her take advantage of some distraction. You need to do something that maybe relies on partic you need to make it believable. I can believe that a skilled enough person can overcome two stormtroopers depending on what she does. Maybe she pulls out a secret pistol that she has cuz it makes sense that she'd carry a a secret little pistol, secret little gun from underneath her her jacket or uh, maybe a holster in her boot. Maybe she pretends to drop her hat and as she goes down to reach for it, she pulls out the gun from her boot. Something, you know, something that has a level of creativity in it that I can believe. But, uh, yeah, yeah. To make it clear what she's doing as is, it just kind of... It doesn't, by the way, it doesn't need more cuts. The problem with the scene is not that it doesn't have enough cuts. I'm sick of the, the action scenes in a lot of Disney stuff is horrific throughout. One of the reasons being it's so, it's got so many cuts in it. You can't tell what's happening. 
you don't get the flow of the fight. Looks like she's doing this like weird slap fight with him. It looks weird. The thing they like to that people really like to go after it for is the thing with uh, Obi Wan putting Leia under his cloak. Yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. That's absolutely nuts. That's nonsense. That makes no sense whatsoever. It is stupid beyond belief, and you would have to be a fool to defend it. You would have to be an absolute fool to defend that. It is so stupid. It single-handedly ruins the competence of Tala, of Obi-Wan Kenobi for trying that shit in the first place, the Empire for not noticing the four-legged man who looks like Obi-Wan Kenobi walking out of the secure facility after the alarms have been tripped, it's a joke. Don't defend it. I hope you won't. Which I also think could have been alleviated if they, they limited that by doing uh, just sideways shots of it. So that No! 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 Because that wouldn't change what the people in the universe would see. Nobody... That wouldn't change anything. It would just make it less viewable for the audience. But the audience and what we see is not the same as what all of the people in the thing see. That wouldn't have changed the stormtroopers and the security people and the inquisitors they basically walked right by. It wouldn't have changed any of it. It wouldn't have made it any less stupid. It just maybe would have hit it from the less... I don't know, dare I say, the the audience that didn't pay attention as much. It maybe would have hit it from them. That way it's not as obvious. They did a lot of front shots, and then they did this weird shot where they, they actually show her under the... It's, it's clearly Obi-Wan Kenobi in a beard, walking out calmly. Is uh, It's such a joke. Cloak, and it's very... She looks out, it's like, yeah, we, we really need to let you stupid fucking girl. Like, uh, yeah, we knew she was there, you don't have to do the show, shot to... Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is true. They didn't have to show that. But you have to remember that the people who like Star Wars, like you, are idiots. They're very, very stupid. And so you have to explain everything to them and constantly remind them of everything because they don't remember things. Because they're unable to look at things objectively. Because they don't remember basic things like cause and effect. Because they buy Black Widow and exclusive promotional popcorn buckets. To reveal it. The people who like this show are the people who buy Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn buckets. That's That sums it up right there. That being said, it clearly wasn't a good subterfuge, and they are caught by the stormtroopers soon after. Okay, no. They're, they're caught because Reva apparently knows when nobody else does. And this is important to the plot because this is what gets them outside. It gets them out into the landing deck where they can then magically magic is the only way i can describe it magically be saved by two snow speeders they should not have been able to get to this point they should have had to fight their way tooth and nail through this facility or or obi one of them should have prepared and gave every one of them those little water breathers and then have them go back the way they came escape into the water and then just lay low and hang out maybe swim away something like that right but that's not what they did they decided they'd go out to the hangar very risky move it's not like it, it was a good uh, move um you might be noticing a lot of this seems like quibble stuff but it's a lot of stuff i've been seeing that i largely agree with it's it's weird and it's wonky i'm glad you agree with some problems in the show i mean you think it's very very good god forbid um, By the way, we haven't talked about anything relating to really characters, consistency, a little bit of plot stuff. I, I would say that the, um, the, the the jacket thing we just talked about is definitely a plot element. It's not like like in my opinion, none of this is stuff that actually destroys the series. <sighs> I know the jacket thing. It really flirts with the kind of it because it's very plot important it allows them to get to a location where they need to be so that they can escape this you know th this fortress so it is pretty darn important i feel like the bigger complaints people love it this series is stuff that isn't an issue like i would okay like what the stuff with riva riva is a horrifically written character that makes no sense whatsoever she's a joke and a clown Defend her, please. Do it. I want you to defend Reva's writing. I'll go ahead and say this. Moses Ingram, 
for the first half the series wasn't really selling it to me she never sold it for me i think it was just the character i i, I guess again it's it's tough to say is it the character i feel like the actress did a fine job portraying this silly clown person this this evil clown character uh her performance i felt was a bit lackluster I don't think it was ever lack... It's, it's hard to tell. I don't know. I think she just did what the director wanted her to do. And I think she did that well. It's just what the director wanted her to do was a really bad decision. That being said, by the second half of the series, she actually pretty much sold the character to me. I was... I would love to know if there was a particular turning point. ...on board. The biggest complaint I have about her character is that pretty much her origin story and what's going to happen to her is one... 100% predictable. predictable. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it is super predictable. However, if the biggest problem with the character is that they're predictable, that's probably a pretty decently written character. Because there should be a level of predictability, I think, in a lot of kinds of characters. If you understand what a character is thinking, how they feel, what they want, what they are willing to do to get what they want, and where they're coming from... I think there is an element of predictability that comes with writing that character. Ah, I know. I know Jim Bob McThornton pants. He has this character trait, and he comes from this background, and he talks like this, and he wants to do these things. I'm predicting that he will behave in this way if this situation arises. Or when I see something, I'm not at all surprised by it because I know this character. That's a quality. Because you've been able to convey accurately who a character is to an audience. Her issues are not that it's predictable. Or that she is predictable. Uh, or I guess it's not that she is predictable. That her story... We're going to have to get a little meta here. But her story was predictable. I think it was Fringy who, when we in our watch through of the episodes, he nailed very quickly exactly who the... Um, what her story was. That she was the... That she was the a youngling from the opening of the series who survived Order 66 and is looking for Kenobi because she's bitter or something. Uh, he, I think he caught on in like the first minute that we see her on screen. Very predictable. However, definitely not the biggest problem with Reva. It's that her whole character and her motivation and everything about her, what she does, does not make sense. For instance... I want him to explain why she wanted Luke Skywalker dead at the end. I would I would be curious to see if this... I think his name is um, Robert Setlock III. If, if Robert here... If, if old Bob will... Uh, he looks more like a Rob than a Bob to me. Yeah. He gives me more Rob vibes. Not gonna, I, I'm going to go with Rob. This is a Rob face to me. I feel like you're like a Robert. You look more like a Robert than a Bob. But uh, Robert here, I, I feel like... He's not going to get into it. I don't think. I don't think he will. I don't, I really don't think he will. Like they have the thing with the younglings, and then you have this new character that just pops up. Yeah, I figured it out like immediately. Oh, she must have been one of the younglings, and guess yeah. what? She's one of the younglings. But that's not that. That in and of itself isn't a problem. The problem is how she got from being stabbed through the chest by Anakin, left for dead or thought to be dead, she said she played dead, to somehow becoming an Inquisitor, while Darth Vader knew about her the whole time, and her motivations for hunting down Kenobi this whole time, and all of the horrifically evil things that she did to the Jedi along the way, while those things being the reason that she hates Kenobi so much. It, her character is broken, and it does not work. It does not work on fundamental levels. It needs a complete rewrite from the ground up. And then she goes after Luke. Why? Tell me why. I would. Why does she go after Luke? Tell me. And then I'm uh, as she's going after Luke. Uh, You're wondering why. You have this great fight between Obi Wan and Vader, and uh, of course he thinks it's great. There's like no way Obi Wan can get to uh, Luke in time to save. Exactly. It, it's really crazy how apparently tiny this universe is. I, I, I could have sworn that this was a vast galactic spanning world, but I guess you can just hop on a ship and just fly right over here and then boom, you're there and that's that. And there's no travel time and you can just be wherever you need, whenever you need to be there. Very, it's, it's, it's shit. It's, it's just, it's just bad writing. It's just bad writing. I, I think I mentioned, I think it was in the first Kenobi video I did, this concept of space and time. Space and time are aspects of a story. 
Your characters need to be in places, and it takes time for them to get from place to place. This is something that often might not be an issue, but it absolutely can be an issue. It needs to be accounted for. If you have to cross the galaxy, then you have to get from place A, place A, space A, space B, <laughs> while crossing space to do it, in a certain amount of time. If there's a ticking clock, like Reva attacking Luke, again, for reasons that I'm, I, I'd love for him to elaborate on, it takes time. And if you just have him be where he needs to be, then, yeah, fucking logic, what's that? Violate space and time, doesn't matter. Save him. That's the kind of shit that pulls people, or pulls shows down in the, in the, in the, that one to ten scale. When we really start to abandon space and time and their constraints and ignore them for the sake of a story, ooh, that's the kind of stuff that you expect in those, those lower, those one to three or one to four tier. It really just, it's just bad writing. It's just bad writing. But when you think about it, it's like, wait, is she going to slaughter Luke just like her friends were slaughtered in front of her? I don't think so. Yeah, why would she go there to do that? That's kind of crazy that she would even go through all of this trouble to hunt Luke down, to get there with a lightsaber, to really kill him. Why did she go there in the first place? And that's exactly what happens. She has Luke. Uh, he's knocked out in front of her. All she has to do is kill him. And she can't do it because of what happened at the beginning when she was a youngling and what Anakin did to the younglings. And she it's Yeah, but she's been doing that to Jedi for years now. For years, she has been hunting down Jedi. By the way, why is it? Why is Luke the one that broke the line? How come Luke is the one who crossed over? She's willing to torture children. She's willing to dismember random people. She's willing to basically just go around killing innocent people, like she almost does with Owen there uh, at, in the first episode. And think about this. The Jedi that she is hunting down, how many of them are Jedi that she knew when she was a youngling in the temple? There would be potential personal connections between her and the people that she's been hunting down for these years, but those didn't break that line for her. But Luke Skywalker did. Why? Because he was young? Is that it? If she just found a young force sensitive person would that have broken it down because she has no personal connection whatsoever to luke skywalker is this the first child that she's hunted down is that why it broke the line for her you see we don't get any of these explorations into her character because we have to have all this stupid plot crap happening and i'm not denigrating plot as a concept of course i'm big into plot but a lot of the plot stuff here is just a waste and it leads to nowhere and it's not necessary whereas exploring the things like oh i don't know motivations of the villain and why they're doing what they're doing, yeah, I'd say that we should probably be giving that a little bit more time. She can't bring herself to be like Anakin. Uh but she has been like Anakin for many, 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 many years now. Well, actually, I don't know how many years. For a while. She's been killing and slaughtering just as much as he has this whole time. She's been torturing children. She's been cutting limbs off people. She's been trying to kill people and succeeding at killing people for years now. As far as I'm concerned, she is basically on the same level as Darth Vader in terms of evilness. And the fact that the show thinks that she gets a redemption because at the end she decides to not kill a child? Um, okay. <laughs> Good for you? A hundred percent predictable. Um, I mean, it's not, it's, to be fair... One of the reasons it's 100% predictable is because we know that Luke Skywalker has to be alive for Episode 4 to happen. So, eh. Now, does this mean the character's bad? No, it just means... I mean, it's bad for all the reasons that I elaborated on briefly here. I kind of saw the story coming. Now we gotta talk about some of the good stuff. Alright, I guess Reva is... What do you mean, now we've gotta talk about some of the good stuff? Uh, it's odd for you to say that after you praise Reva's character, but... Oh, I guess, yeah, that's that's all we get about Reva. <laughs> I think this is probably the best portrayal of Vader, considering the time period. I think this is the worst portrayal of Vader that we have ever seen in uh, Disney Star Wars. This is the worst portrayal of Vader that we have ever seen. He gets it totally wrong, completely opposite of what is true, He is, is what his position is. Vader in the OT, pretty darn good. Great villain. 
Vader in Rogue One behaves totally in character. He's got his little mannerisms, he behaves appropriately, he's cutting down rebels and this with this cruel, kind of efficient, unfeeling malice. Um, he's not just like, ooh, spooky bad guy for its own sake. He's not a silly cartoon villain like they've kind of turned him into. He is smart, he's calculating, he enacts plans, he executes those plans, he has a bit of a character. He could be just a little bit quippy, which is what I like. Um, and this portrayal of Vader is flat and cartoonishly evil. He's stupid. He has been given powers that he has lost when he pulls the, um, when he pulls the transport ship down in episode five. Don't ask me why he didn't do that on Hoth to pull the Millennium Falcon down. Don't ask me why he didn't do that in Rogue One to stop the Tanta Four from getting away. Don't ask me why these things happen. These these things that would have been would have been immensely important to the plot of the original trilogy. Don't ask me why he doesn't use it then. <sighs> they just gave him a super. They they gave him an insane force power. And they are not willing to. They don't care about the consequences. You can't give him this kind of a force power when he does not use it later when he needs to be using it. But I'm sure you thought it was very cool. I'm sure you clapped. I'm sure that you sat there with your Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn bucket. And you sat there with your bucket and you're clapping. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. It's so amazing. He's pulling the starship down. Oh, and he's ripping the hull apart with the force effortlessly. Oh my goodness, this is so amazing. Don't know why he did, didn't do this stuff before, but what all? That's, that's fine. I'm sure it looked amazing. And that's what's important, right? This is like half prequel Vader and half uh, original trilogy. No, this is its own Vader, where he's a stupid idiot. Um, he would just do... Uh, Vader, where he's he's very menacing like the original trilogy. Um, menacing? I mean, I, I guess you just gave him... You just, you just turned his magic powers up to 11 in a way that really kind of damages his character later. He doesn't... I don't know. I, it's menacing? I mean, like, I wouldn't want him chasing me down, but he's just being evil for cartoonish reasons. Well, like, like when he, in, in Empire Strikes Back, when he tortures Han Solo, that was for a reason. He's not just, ooh, I'm bad and I torture people. He does it to lure Luke into Cloud City. There's a reason for why he does what he does. But here, it's just like, I'm just going to use the force to drag this lady across the ground. I'm just going to lift this guy up and throw him. I'm just going to break this guy's neck because I'm just Darth Vader and I just go out killing people with the force. That's just what I do. I'm just evil. Ah, I just kill people. <sighs> but he's kind of petulant like the the prequel trilogy and it, it mixes I mean he's juvenile in the sense that his plans are stupid and he allows the rebellion to live so that he can go fight Obi-Wan and lose instead of using his resources makes him look like an idiot more than anything else this is those together surprisingly well I think Hayden Christensen with the little bit of screen time he has does a fantastic job he's fine yeah sure yeah and he gets Let me calm down. his best moment in the duel uh, at the end between him and Obi-Wan. Um, where his helmet gets like shattered and you get to see half his face, which is a very creepy image. Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah. And during that, I love this. I mean, I complained about some of the direction earlier. This is a, a this whole fight had beautiful direction. I think it had really lame direction. Uh, I think there was. I think the conversation they have. It's it's got some neat stuff with the lighting. I suppose with the lightsabers colors, but really for the most part, it was it was really nothing that I would even. The problem with a lot of these fights now is that they take place in these very flat, static places. They're not going up and down stairs. They're not in these interesting environments where they're jumping up and down to different platforms. They're not being mobile. They're just kind of walking back and forth on these flat, even surfaces that are easy to shoot in a studio. And uh, it's I you don't get the sense that they're really trying to have this cool fight. And this scene where uh, Vader's helmet is cracked open and you see Hayden Christensen's scarred up face under it, it's kind of wonderful. Because you can... It's neat. It, it's somewhat neat looking. And there are, are in isolation some nifty lines. And the stuff they do with the voice changing where it's partially him partially the the what i don't know what you call it a vocoder or a voice amplifier whatever it is of his helmet that's neat the problem is that these little bits of neatness and the 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 quality of the acting particularly by ewan mcgregor is surrounded by plot crap 
and nonsense, which ru it taints the entire thing. Get this the 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 blue and red light over his face while he's talking to Obi Wan. Yeah, those lightsabers sure are bright, and with Disney, ooh boy, they love their bright glowing lightsabers. That would be very distracting if you're fighting in the dark, and these lightsabers are extremely bright, but blindingly so. I think that's something people forget a lot is that when it's like in the movies when you have someone in the dark and they're searching around, they hold up the light like the lantern right in front of their eyes like you're, you're you're blinding yourself in the dark you're you're giving you're you're making it harder for you to see because you have a dark environment and you're putting up a bright light in front of your face it would be the same thing it would be the same thing as if you're if you're in the dark and you have a lightsaber and it's glowing very very brightly it would be very confusing and imprecise because that's such a glowing bright light he's he's telling obi-wan you didn't kill anakin I killed Anakin. And for all the people screaming about canon, that's like... I, I don't think that's an issue with canon. I think it's just Anakin or Darth Vader saying that, yeah, I's like, I, I've committed to this fully. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this is an issue with canon. This is not the canon issue you need to be talking about. It's weird. A you have far more pressing canon breaks to be discussing. Great moment that actually helps with canon because if you remember the beginning of A New Hope... Helps with I mean, it just tells us what we already knew, but which, which is fine, because it's coming from him, but it's fine. Obi-Wan tells Luke that Darth Vader killed his father. Yeah. But we knew this from the OT. A young Jedi named Darth Vader, who was a pupil of mine until he turned to evil. He betrayed and murdered your father. Yeah, kind of. And then in Empire Strikes Back, Obi-Wan explains what he meant, like, from a certain point of view, da 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 We knew this. This is all, all self-contained in the original trilogy. It, it, it's fine. We didn't need supplemental additions to this that make it better. It works as it is. And then, of course, you know, to explain it away, to retcon it away, they're like, oh, well, you know, that Obi-Wan's Force Ghost says, you know, what I said was correct from a certain point of view. But this, like, helped. Yeah, yeah, we, we knew all this. It wasn't a retcon. I suppose it was an elaboration on something in, in, in a way that made sense based on his character. Especially considering who Obi-Wan is. Obi-Wan is willing to... It, it shows that Obi-Wan is kind of... He's got this streak in him at this point in the OT. Where he's willing to kind of like, stretch the truth to get Luke to kill Vader. That's why Obi-Wan allows himself to die in a sense i think when he, he looks over to luke before he dies i i think there's an aspect of obi-wan who allows himself to be killed by vader so that it further motivates luke to kill vader himself that's kind of obi-wan's a neat character like that he's a very interesting character helps like solidify why he told him that because that's what anakin or darth vader told him darth vader told him no i killed anakin you didn't kill anakin I am not your failure. I, I don't know if there's um, going to be copyright issues here. We'll see. Obi-Wan, you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, I, I, the voice is really neat. I really like the... the, the it, it's, it, it's superficial, but it, it is really cool the way that, you know, Christensen's voice and the helmet voice kind of alternate back and forth because it's damaged. <laughs> I did. And it's it's true. Um yeah, we know it's true. We do. Yeah, we, that's what that's we've known that since we've known that since 1980. Um so, I mean, thanks for catching up. What caused Anakin to become Darth Vader was a 100% Anakin's choice. Um mm, I mean, he was manipulated. I think one of the issues with the prequel trilogy is that that ramping up of him becoming evil is just like him going straight to killing children and outside. There's some defi definitely some um, some issues there with how quickly he turns super duper evil. But it's I mean he was manipulated. He was taken advantage of. It's I mean Palpatine has a huge part in you know in that. But of course it's his fault as well. But I'll calm down on the 100. percent Obi Wan didn't force him down that path. Um, 
Mm. I love that moment. And that whole yeah, fight funny. between Obi-Wan and Anakin. That it was really bad. There, that rematch. Uh, everybody was criticizing. I mean, re rematch. The, the fight in episode three. Yeah, it was shit. Uh, when in reality, Kathleen Kennedy, when she said this series will have the rematch of the century, it was the episode six fight, which... Gee, if you think this is the rematch of the century, fucking hell, dude. Our bar, our, our bar for quality is subterranean. It's how low it is. How how come he how come Vader dominated him in episode three, but Kenobi dominated Vader in episode six? Why? What's the how come we went from one to the other? What was the what was the change in Kenobi's abilities? Because remember, Luke gets years and years of training with Yoda, right? He learns about the Force. He's trained by Master Yoda, and then as a result, he's able to beat uh, Darth Vader. What's the difference here? How come Kenobi goes from getting his ass beat to beating ass? What's the difference? Now, we, we thought that, of course, this is where they would bring Qui-Gon's Force Ghost back to give him the pep talk and explain to him some things and get him back on the path and, you know, to get his old mentor to finally talk to him so that he can face Vader again. But, yeah, they squander Qui-Gon Jinn too. Fuck it. Yeah, it was kind of obvious it'd be episode six where they do the rematch of the century. I mean, it's not the rematch of the century. You need to calm the fuck down. Um, and it was a great fight. Uh, Obi Wan had already fought. It's a joke of a fight. It it really is kind of crap. The cutting was really awkward. Really uninspired place that they fight in. It's just some dark rocks. The fact that they can so effortlessly, like Kenobi, he lifts up like this a goddamn anime. He lifts up dozens and dozens of boulders, and he throws these boulders with a force, and they fly, and they hit Darth Vader, and he's not killed by all. It's just, it's nonsense. It's all a bunch of crap. There's just, ugh. but people clap for anything. Because Disney Star Wars has conditioned people to not know what a fight scene is. Vader and already kind of got his butt kicked. He already got his mojo back and he's ready to fight Ma Vader. And quite frankly, he kicked butt. Um, he was clearly the master in that situation. And Why? Why, though? What's the difference? How did he get his mojo back, as you so eloquently put it? How? How? What's the difference between the Episode 3 fight and the Episode 6 fight? What has changed for Kenobi? How how is how have we gotten such a stark difference? And the line in episode four everybody's talking about. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. What's so interesting is that the Mustafar fight to this fight, there was no they they never met in this time, right? It's so hard to accept the events of Kenobi as actually having happened. It's totally fine the way that it was between Vader and Kenobi here and Vader and Kenobi on Mustafar. And the fact that people will say, see, it works perfectly fine and it's even better now, see? Like, you, you are, you're, you're putting barriers in between these two moments and then saying, see, it, it works fine. Ben? We just, we didn't need to have these moments. They didn't exist originally and you, you, found a gap. Disney found a gap and they they slotted bullshit in so that people like this with their fucking Black Widow exclu exclusive promotional popcorn buckets would splooge and consume all over these fights. Anyways, after this series, yeah. That's 100% where they live. No, god damn. What do you mean after this series? It was that way originally. This If this series didn't exist, that's how it was. This hasn't changed anything. If anything, it's damaged immense amount of stuff. Because you have to have an excuse for why Darth Vader is still alive. If you're going to add another fight between this and if, but between uh, Mustafar and the Death Star, you have to explain why Kenobi doesn't kill Vader. And Mustafar, he left him for dead. He thought he would die. Couldn't bring himself to do it. Whatever the reason may be that you use particularly. And here... I want to know why Kenobi leaves Vader alive. There's no reason. There's no, there's no reason. And as a result, uh, Kenobi essentially becomes an accomplice in the deaths of countless thousands. So, good job. Leave it off at. Um, God. You're looking at your notes there. God, there's just some really good stuff here. Uh, 
I hope you're not looking at notes, because if you have notes and this is how we're doing, it's not, it's, it's not, yeah. Um, lots of people were complaining about performances. I thought performances were overall very good. Hayden Christ yeah, Christensen. And the performances throughout were fine. I mean, Ewan, Ewan's pretty touch and go, honestly. He's got some great bits in the, in the, um, when he's talking with Vader at the end of the fight, but a lot of his deliveries are just awkward and odd and they're, they're just sort of, they're, they're very just bland and stilted. And a lot of, yeah, a lot of the performances are just really, eh, it's fine, yeah. It's great. Uh, Moses Ingram, like I said, I thought the first half of this series wasn't really working for me. Second half sold me the character. How? Why? I thought, uh, they didn't give Joel Egerton that much to do, but what he did have to do, he did a great job. Uh, let me look up Joel Egerton. I just, uh, just. Is he? Oh, he's Uncle Owen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got some good moments. Sure. Uh, the child actress who played Leia did a great job. No, I fucking hated her. Jeez, it's again, it's like the it's like the Moses Ingram thing. I don't know if the I guess she was just told to play this super annoying, snotty little snarky bitch. I suppose she was told to play that. I, I just, I hated Leia from episode one. I fuck, this show makes me hate Leia. That, that's the, the talent of Disney's that they can get me to hate Leia Organa in a way that not even the sequels were able to get me. To, not even The Last Jedi made me hate Leia. <laughs> and boy, they pushed it. Um, you might notice there's a name I haven't brought up. It's Ewan McGregor. Because Ewan McGregor didn't do a great job. He did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal. Okay, so hyperbolic is... Jeez, we need to calm down, okay, with the praise of this stuff, okay? Yeah, I think he was pretty... If you, if you averaged it all out, he was fine, I guess. The high, He peaked in the episode 6 fight when he's talking with Vader... How his acting, not what's not the not the writing, the acting was very very impressive, but throughout the show I felt really, well, I just didn't get the Kenobi vibes from him. You could clearly tell that a different writer, just you can clearly tell different writers were in charge of his character, and he didn't feel like Kenobi. I feel like a lot of the lines he delivered were just really meh. Like when he's talking to all the rebels in episode five, a lot of those lines as he's outlining the plan and what they're gonna do, it's just flat, and it has this this bad version of prequel dullness to it, almost like it was, they're using that voice robot like they do for Vader. Bob. He sold this series. Like, holy shit, he was great in this. He's, uh, you need to, I, you need to learn what good acting is. I don't know what to say. Watch a, watch a damn Mike Flanagan series. Series. I just don't even know how much to describe it. Like, there's that bit in episode, I want to say three, where he kind of fucks up and he calls Leia by her name. Yeah, eh. yeah, it's it's really it really undermines him as a character because it turns him into an idiot buffoon. And he's having a stupid contest with the stormtroopers in that truck with him. They're trying to out stupid each other to see how stupid each other can can be. And like Obi Wan's like, how 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 dumb can I get before they catch on that I'm Obi Wan? And they still don't. He's like, dang, truly they are the masters of stupid. And the guards are, like, obviously suspicious at that point. Calm down. Slow down. They are obviously suspicious. But they're not... They're, like... It's worse that they're suspicious, because if they didn't say anything, then we could just assume that they hadn't been told, or they didn't know, or this is a planet where they're just not that in touch with the Empire or something. Like, maybe this is far away from things, or maybe they don't... Per they, maybe these two just don't care about Jedi, or that the Jedi aren't constantly some threat that they're looking after after all these years but they know who they're looking for they know obi-wan kenobi's name they know leia's name presume i guess they don't know what he looks like because this guy looked it's it's like it's parody it's indistinguishable from parody indistinguishable from a parody and then he goes oh it's her mother's name and i can't i can't do the line the way he does it though the way he sells no, you give yourself some credit. You might be able to do it better. I wouldn't. I don't think it was very impressive. The oh, it's you remind me so much of your mother. I get confused. The way he said it, he sells it, and it makes sense why the guards would be like, "Oh, okay." Is, is he? Let me let me look it up because I'm just sort of like, eh. 
Let's see what bring up here. That was her mother's name. I get confused. Okay. Like I said, it's not been easy. Yeah, I just... Uh... Sometimes when I look at Luma, I see her mother's face. It's just, it's fine. It's fine, I guess. Like, I don't know, I... If I was the director, I'd be like, ah, can you show a... Can you show some... I, I feel like you can do better, Ewan. That's that's what I'd say. It's like, this is fine. And if we were really pressed for time, I guess we could put it in. But I feel like we could do better here. Anyway. Back to the magic. Back to the... Let's close that over here. Just looking at some stuff. I get confused. Like I said, it's not been easy. Oh, he shows it. Oh, ah, he shows it. Uh... Sometimes when I look at Luma, I see her mother's face. It was a brilliant performance. It I mean, God, come fucking hell, it was fine at best. It was fine. I guess the director was, I don't know, as incompetent as you are, but Jesus, we gotta, we, we gotta get you watching some shows, man. You, you need to watch some, some Bly Manor and Hill House. We, we, we gotta get you watching some Chernobyl so we can get some performances, man. Because if this is the kind of stuff you think is phenomenal, then geez, the bar is so low. It's sad. And he does a great job. He he starts the series kind of broken and fucked up, and by the end, he's got his, his mojo back. Why? Explain why. Can you could you tell me the process that led him from one state to the other? I bet you couldn't. I bet you couldn't. And that's really what this entire series was about. By the way, I think his acting is pretty much the same all the way through. You don't get the feeling that he's broken in the beginning and he maybe at the very very end when he's on the little space pad or the 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 the, the landing pad with Leia and Alderaan at the end. He he seems a little bit he seems more upbeat there, but until that point, you really just don't get the vibe that anything's really changed. The beginning of this series is Obi-Wan. He had spent his time, had to turn his back on everything. Absolutely everything. Jeez, that, they, are you trying for an Oscar here? Jesus. So much. <laughs> Jesus. He had ever known. He grew up as a Jedi. Everything he knows is Jedi. Like, if Anakin was too old to learn, that means Obi-Wan was even younger than Anakin when he started learning. Well, that's like, that's all, that's, yeah, it should be like all, almost all Jedi, typically. Being a Jedi is all he fucking knows, and he had to turn his back on that, and he... Yeah, it, it would have been nice if they explored that in the show, but they didn't. They didn't explore that in this show. You got maybe, like, what, three minutes? Four minutes of Obi-Wan just kind of living a life? But we, we never explored that. We never did. There are just not scenes where he talks about this sort of thing. He doesn't have anyone to converse with about this sort of thing. We don't, we don't see that. That's not in the show. You are inventing things where they do not exist. It's not in the show. It does not exist. You don't have those scenes where he sits in this, refl this, this meaningful reflection where he thinks about his life now and where he's come from and how he feels about it. He just kind of sits around and he's sort of sad for a little bit, but that's it. Before it becomes anything meaningful, it's over and we are in the sludge plot adventure. We don't get to explore how he feels and why he feels the way he feels and what he plans to do on it. We don't get that. It's not in the show. If you say it is, you are reading so far into it that you are inventing things where they don't exist. He was broken from it. He doesn't come across as broken in the beginning. He really doesn't. He just comes across as... He doesn't have the life of someone who's broken. He just looks like he's just normally just leading kind of a normal life. He's got a job. He's got a place. He talks with the, the Jawas, and he looks at Luke from a distance, and he goes into town. You don't, like, I guess you could say he's a little, a little sad. Uh, stoic, maybe, might be more an accurate way to describe it. But the if you're saying that we see him broken, we're just not, you're not watching the show in a way that's, that's accurate. 
you're filling in you're 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 projecting your vision of the show and the character into the show where it doesn't exist. That's the kind of stuff we needed in the show. It's the stuff we desperately needed in the show and we just did not get. And from his perspective, the best way to protect Luke and be there for Luke is to not be a Jedi. And that is one of the dumbest fucking things you could ever imagine. If you are Obi-Wan Kenobi, this is like one of the earliest destructions of his character, right? Because remember, it's been 10 years or so. So he's had a lot of time to mull things over and think about them. It's not like this is a week or two after he's done his mission, right? He has been given a mission by Yoda. He knows what he has to do. He is focused. He knows that in the end, if we're going to get back at things, we have to protect Luke and then train him eventually. I have to protect Luke Skywalker. I have to do this. And so what is his way, version of doing this? I'm going to take the only weapon, the weapon that I'm most skilled in, the most useful weapon that I have, that I will need to use if anyone, if, if Vader comes back, if one of the Inquisitors comes back, I'm going to need this weapon. He buries it in the desert where he can't use it. So he's not going to do much good protecting Luke then. He doesn't use the force he doesn't practice with it he doesn't meditate with it he doesn't increase his understanding of the force he he lets it slip he you don't get the idea that he needs to be he's not training he's not keeping himself ready which is what he should be doing he should be keeping himself vigilant there's no part of not being a jedi that 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 that, that would make this not work he doesn't have to go into the center of town and do magic tricks and swing his lightsaber around. You can practice and meditate stealthily in your cave or just while you're out and about. You can use the Force in subtle and interesting ways through your life that will not give you away, that might help the people around you. But he doesn't do that for reasons that we don't really know. It's Like I said, it's not explored in any anything resembling a meaningful way. The idea that he's just a loser here doesn't make any sense to the character. You have to explain why. This series is about him learning he is wrong. No, it isn't. It really isn't. Because if we take all the scenes of him, I don't know, having conversations with people, it's just, it's so thin. It really is. It's so thin. We don't really know why he's in the state he is at the beginning. We can theorize... But the show doesn't do any of that work. All of the work in putting him where he is, it's totally on us, the audience, to imagine why that's the case. And the show takes advantage of that, therefore they don't show it or do anything meaningful or deep. The best way to protect Luke is to embrace being a Jedi. Don't go out there and show off that you're a Jedi and get... Wait, what? What, what, what are we doing? Luke and be there for Luke is to not be a Jedi. Wait, wait, wait a second. This is confusing. Did he... Does he... Does he and that means Obi-Wan was even younger than Anakin yeah. when he started learning. Being a Jedi is all he fucking knows, and he had to turn his back on that, and he was broken from it. And he, from his perspective, the best way to protect Luke and be there for Luke is to not be a Jedi. Okay. All right. I see. I see. Okay, okay. This series is about him learning he is wrong. The best way to protect Luke is to embrace being a Jedi. All right, I, I totally misunderstood what he was saying. Okay, I gotcha. You're totally, yeah, you are correct. Yes, we, we both share this opinion. I, I misunderstood you with the delivery. Yes, we are, we, are, we are both on the same page here. Don't go out there and show off that you're a Jedi and get exactly. tracked down and killed by hunters. Yes. But don't hide from it either. Yes. Do good. You are in a u unique position to do good. And that's what Obi-Wan learns this series. I Okay, yeah, we're on the same page there. The problem is that they don't explain why in the beginning, in the first episode, he has this perspective. We don't know why. Because at the end of episode three, even, he's there. He's going to watch over him. He's been told that, you know, he's been given this job by Yoda. And he's even been told by Yoda... Mm, communicate with Qui-Gon Jinn, you can. <laughs> Maybe you don't sound like that. But he knows that this is something that he could do. 
And apparently, 10 years go by and he hasn't even entertained that as an idea, or that maybe they forgot about that line or they don't remember it. I don't know. But we're on the same page there. He does need to be a Jedi, yes. It's really good. And it's really well done. It's not. It's actually it's it's very poorly done. There's never a like you never get that moment where he sort of comes to that realization. You know, it just sort of it's almost incidentally that's just kind of how he feels now. You don't get the feeling that he's really learned something valuable and important. And if he did, then it was so poorly communicated that I I can't believe that it's something that would flip him. He just sort of ends up where he ends up. It's not perfect. It's got its bugs. But overall, I thought this was really good. If you think this is really good, then your ability to assess media is woefully inadequate, and you are simply not someone who needs to be talking about media online. You, you, you just have a clear lack of knowledge and a clear lack of skill when it comes to assessing media. Let's just be clear. You think Obi Wan can? You think that this Kenobi show was very, very good? That's that's embarrassing. Just so we're clear, that's embarrassing that you think this show is good. That is embarrassing. It's more embarrassing than your. Nah, I'm not gonna do it. We won't go there. Um. Again, what else? What's out? What else is on your notes? I need to know. I guess I should go ahead and go over some. It wasn't that much, but there was some stuff. Um, that I actually got wrong going over this series. And oh, you don't know. Oh, wow. Looking at other people's critiques. I was watching this series and assuming Reva would be the main villain. And she um, uh, is Reva the main villain of the show? You could take Darth Vader out of the show and still have a show. You cannot take Reva out of the show and have it be the show. She's more important to the plot. On it, they should have taken out taken out Darth Vader. They should not have had Obi Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader meeting in this show at all. They should not have come into contact with each other. You shouldn't have had Darth Vader. They ruined his character. They did a lot of damage retroactively to other material by having him in here. Um, but of course, the consumers who buy the Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn buckets they'll they'll clap at it and they'll drool and and, and they'll say it's amazing. But, yeah, Reva should have been in the villain. I mean, she's more important to the plot. She's the one who kicks it off by kidnapping Leia and all the stupid stuff she does, as dumb as her plans are and as ridiculous as all the, the stuff she does is, and what she's able to get away with, it is most impactful to the plot. By introducing Vader, we have Vader allowing the Rebellion to live because he, doesn't, because he forgets that he's got a ship full of TIE fighters, I guess. She's not. She's just a supporting character. I don't know. I I just don't. I think she's more important to the plot than Vader is, I feel. She's set up as like a side villain, and then she's kind of a side... I don't think she's set up as the main villain, actually. I think she's set up as the main villain, and then we have the Darth Vader stuff happening. Protagonist, and then she's a side villain again. Side villain again? I, I, don't, I don't think she ever dips beneath Vader in terms of importance. Maybe the last episode for the first half, but she's tr going to get Luke. And as dumb as that is, and as, as as completely mystifying as her motivations may be, it is very important to the plot. But she's just a supporting character. The main villain is Darth Vader. I, I don't think so. I think Reeve is the main villain. If we talk about plot importance, she's more important than Vader is. Anything that Vader did here, you could have uh, a, an Inquisitor do or... You could have her do. It just... Mm, yeah. Vader is here. Va Let's be frank. Vader is here so people who buy Black Widow promotional exclusive popcorn buckets will clap. That's why Vader's in this. And it worked. It clearly worked. It clearly worked. You, you clapped like the good consumers you were. And honestly, I think that's good. I don't think it's good. That's horrific. The way that they damaged Vader in this show is they made him an idiot they made him an absolute buffoon an incompetent moron in this show and damn it shows the less disney shows of any character the better off that character will be i promise you um so i was wrong i assumed reeve was me villain. nope i i don't know why you even brought that up 
But I think it's interesting because all these reviews I've looked at have largely been wrong about this stuff. Really? How so? Do tell. How how have they all been wrong and you're right? Because because I can say that confidently. Any any review who that that calls this show good, I can confidently say that they are wrong and I'm correct. And I have a boatload of references and knowledge about this that I can trot out to explain why they are wrong and why you are wrong. But I'd love to hear your take on that, your perspective. What did they get wrong that you have seen through? Like they will complain about how it breaks canon and... Absolutely. It easily breaks canon. And in the end, the little bit of canon that probably violates because all stuff placed in the middle of the timeline is going to have little canon violation. No! You've already seated. You've already lost. You have already admitted defeat before the battle is fought. You have already said your disnified consumer mind with your fucking Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn bucket. You fucking consumer. You've already been conditioned to say, eh, there's already, there's already going to be cannon breaks. They're already going to break continuity. They're already going to screw up a story. Whatever. It's fine. Because you have let your standards slip so low that you're just willing to say before it even begins. It's just a given. It's just a given. It's just a given. It's just going to happen. Guys, it's just going to happen. Just let it happen. It's fine. Whatever. Consume, consume, consume. Clap for product. I saw Darth Vader, I saw Stormtroopers, and I clapped. Anything that did to break canon, it did like more to fix it. To fix it? What did it need what did it need to fix? Cause I know the answer to this question, by the way. I know, you see, I ask this. It's a little it's a test. Well you call it call it a test, because I know what things they could do to fix it, right? There's, there's some little, little incongruency, incongruencies in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. There's little ones, right? I know when I ask that. But what does he think that this show fixed? May, you know, maybe, he's, maybe he's thinking of something that I don't know of. I would like to hear it. Uh, it really does a great job. And oh, you're not going to explain. Okay, well, fuck it. Um... Don't you, I, I, it's like I'm, I, I've got them all floating around in my mind space, in my head area right now, uh, the weird canon shit that happens. Let's pluck this one out. Don't you think, if you're Luke Skywalker, and in your childhood, some crazy psycho bitch with a lightsaber chases you, attacks your house, chases you in the middle of the night across the desert as you flee for your life from this lightsaber-wielding psychopath... Don't you think that that would kind of, like, like stick with you? Don't you think it's weird that when Luke is given a lightsaber, he doesn't go, what the fuck? Wait, 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 wait. Somebody chased, someone chased me and tried to kill me with one of these things earlier. And it, it was red, but it was the same thing. That's kind of weird. Was that a Jedi that chased me across the desert trying to kill me? What the fuck was that? Who was that woman? Was it, where, where is she now? Is, is she like Darth Vader's apprentice? What the, what the hell's going on here? Don't you think that's weird? And this isn't the biggest one, by the way. It's just the one I decided to pull out in this mo one moment. Don't you think it's weird? Don't you think that's strange? That that's something that he has as a traumatic memory that just apparently never happened, that he never references or brings up or mentions in episode four? Don't, don't you think that's odd? Surely you think that's really odd, right? Surely you think that's bizarre, right? Doesn't create any issues, though. Don't you think it's weird? Let's do another one. How strange is it that when Obi-Wan Kenobi dies on the Death Star in A New Hope, how strange is it that Leia's got no real reaction to that? She just doesn't seem to really care at all. She is the one comforting Luke. Luke is the one who has the great emotional reaction to it. When, if anything, Leia is the one that he has more of a relationship with. Isn't that weird? Isn't it strange that apparently, even though they went on this big adventure together, and they grew close, and they knew each other, and he saved her life, and they, they went to planet to planet. And don't you think it's weird that when he dies, she has no reaction? She doesn't really care. She has no personal connection with him. That's kind of strange. Hmm. It's almost like the show didn't exist when A New Hope was written. Huh. But that's okay. 
no canon issues. It's fine. Whatever. And we're not even going to get into the Empire and Bail Organa stuff and them knowing about Luke and, the, 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 and them knowing about um, the, the connection between Leia and, and Organa and Obi-Wan. And that, that shit is fucked up. That shit is totally fucked up. It does not work at all. That is a total break. But whatever. That's right. Whatever. It's all right. And I think it's actually well set up for season two if they decide wow. to do it. Is it? I think what you... this season does excellently what is, it is that they decide to do Tell one me. season and nothing else. One season. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. One season. It's perfect. One. Yes. They did a great job this season. Great. It's a great job, guys. They did a great job with Kenobi. It really, it really is amazing. It really is fantastic. It can stand on. I watched it and I, w- I ate popcorn out of my bucket. My, my Black Widow <laughs> exclusive promotional <laughs> popcorn bucket. I take it with me to the movie theater. <sighs> he still got it here. He bought, he got the Marvel Studio Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn bucket. And he like displays it prominently. It's like back there. Like, oh man, I've only got so much room to show off my nerd cred. I'll put it behind my explode speakers. <laughs> oh, I, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. I'm I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun. You could if I tell you what, you I'm giving you carte blanche to make fun of my doggy picture however you'd like. And anything you'd like, make fun of it. Go for it. I mean, we we have fun. We we're having fun. I'm just it's fine. It's fine. We're good. So, but they decide to You know the the Boba Fett uh, expand shirt it. that he has, the embarrassing Boba Fett shirt he has. Oh, no, it's not embarrassing shirt. It's just that it's on him so it seems embarrassing. But the the do you guys remember Descent 2? Descent 2 PC game. I uh, I want to feel like it... Descent... Maybe it was the first Descent? Descent PC game. I want to say that the... Like the font of Descent is similar. Uh, let me look at images. You'll see what I mean in a second. Um. Uh, yeah, see, like, the, the little logo, like, the letters here, do they seem like they're similar? Because the color's different, but I want to say that, oh, maybe this is what I'm talking about? Something? Like, is this a remake? Descent... Maybe that's... I, I want to feel like in the old one, there was like the... the This is an old computer game that I grew up kind of playing a bit. And I want to feel like the... I feel... Maybe this is it. Yeah, like this. Does that look a little bit like the uh, Boba Fett letters here? In the Descent letters? Does that... Does that kind of... This is from the opening cinematic, which is kind of funny. Or kind of fun. Does, does, does that look kind of... Like if you turned... I don't know. Maybe it's me. Let's get back to the video. I don't know what the fuck's it doing. More. Awesome, because this series season also does all the the major lifting. Obviously, if you the season does the major lifting, you could say that. Do later seasons? You know, you can't have Anakin. Why not? Fuck it. Throw them in. Have them meet again. If they met two more times after this and they still ended with Obi-Wan beating him uh, for a fourth time, you you people would clap. You'd love it. You'd sit there with your fucking Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn bucket and you'd be chowing down. You'd be having a great time. You'd love it. You don't care. You don't actually care. Don't pretend that you do. You can't have Leia. Why not? Fuck it. Why not? Like, really? Why not? Why not? They've already, as much as they've broken canon already, just fuck it. Why not? Actually, why not? Just do it. Fuck it. People don't care. You people don't give a shit. Just throw it in. Leia's here and Mando's here and we see Luke Skywalker again and Uncle Owen, he starts an ice skating rink and he makes a million dollars, but it goes out of business and so he has to go back to moisture farming. Fuck it. You could definitely do more with Luke. I think that... Oh my God, he said it! (laughs) He did it. He said it right after. Oh, fuck it why they want to do Leia of this season because this is really their best shot do something with Leia and then they- no don't don't just don't don't have anything Leia lives a normal life and she learns to be uh, a, a senator and she 
Like, I guess you could have something where she starts to become, because of her parents, she gets sympathetic with the rebellion and starts helping them. And that's what gets her into the, the trouble she gets in at the beginning of episode four. Like, there's something you could do there. But at this point, no, stay away. Disney writers are horrifically untalented and they, they lack any sort of ability to tell good stories. Don't include anything. If, if at least some of these shows like Boba Fett and Mandalorian, at least they they create their own shit to ruin. They don't do much to ruin everything outside of them. At least there's that. At least they're more self-contained. They probably really should it, but they could definitely do more of Luke. They could do more of Qui Gon, who has a brief cameo at the end of this. Um, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this series. Not perfect, as I've said. Wow, not perfect. Okay, well, sure. thanks for letting us know it's not perfect. I agree. On that, we agree. On, on, we, on that, we do agree. It is not perfect. Pretty good. Okay. Um, When did we get to the racism stuff? You thought that was a good enough bit to have at the beginning with your VHS thing. Uh, when are we going to get to that? But I'm, now, almost, I'm almost sick of talking about Kenobi because I hate this show so much. I also want to do a brief overview um, of all those videos I've watched. All the, the videos and just s some reviews and some just terrible takes on this. I would love to hear what you think is a terrible take, Mr. Kenobi is very good. I have to piss though. I have to, I've been drinking this water here and uh, it, it just goes straight through me. I'm just like a, I'm just a piss factory. I drink so much water. I will be right. Woo. I am back. I am, I'm back a bit lighter, refilled my water i got my little yeti mug here yeti there's a sponsorship i should look into i love this mug but man i just i, I piss a lot i just drink a lot of water and I, and I take it easy on the sodas but i have some of those here and there but man i've just been uh it is and plus i want to wrap this up i've been going for a while we're, we're almost done we got about five minutes left but it's it's 12 10 a.m so it's just past midnight and i'm kind of getting quite peckish i haven't i have not eaten today and, or I guess yesterday, I didn't eat, really, yesterday, I might have snacked a bit yesterday, but um, I'm getting quite hungry, and I don't really have any food in the fridge because I'm trying to buy less food, because um, uh, I'm trying to eat, I'm trying to eat better and eat a little bit less, and I've been doing a pretty good job. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my grandma, I, I met her doing some, you know, helping them out with some stuff, and she was like, oh, oh, rags, because that's my name. You look a little bit slimmer than normal. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I'm trying to, you know, little, little exercises and trying to eat better. So I'm trying to keep that up. But so I don't have much food in my fridge. So I might go, oh, I, 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 part of me wants to go to Waffle House. But if I go to Waffle House, because they're always, Waffle House is always open. Ye oldie. You can always rely on Waffle House. People over at Waffle House, they know what the, they know what the fuck they're doing. But if I go there, I, I, it's, it's not really that good for you. But, and I'll have to get hash browns when I go there, but hash browns are really, like, you know, big and carby, so I'll have to... I don't know what I'll do if I go, because I am, like, legit kind of hungry right now. It has been, like, a day since I've eaten. Um, I don't know what I'll do. I... It's... Who knows? It's the mystery. Maybe I'll just... Maybe I'll... I'm, I've probably got some nuts around the house. They're somewhere. Yeah, they're over there. I got some, Maybe I'll... I don't know. Point being, let us proceed. Because normally, I... I, when I, I go to the store um, and I get I, I, I get veggies, there's a lot of veggies I like. I will get mushrooms and bell peppers and uh, like a mix of like zucchini and yellow squash. I'll chop all that up and I'll salt and pepper and some some like stir fry sauces and things and I'll grill those. And then depending on what's on sale at the store, it might be like sirloin or chimkin. Sometimes the sometimes the drumsticks. Where I go, you'll get like a dozen of them for five bucks. It's crazy. Uh, but I might get some whatever's on sale, kind of. If hell, if fish is on sale, I'll go. Out and I'll get fish. I had some like they were selling whiting for super cheap, and you, you just thaw it out. And as long as you know how to take it apart, because it's got bones in there. Once you know how to take it apart, that's some good cheap food. Whiting's not bad at all. You just got to know how to sort of eat it, because you'll get the little bone bits in there. But once you know how to do that, it's it's it tastes good it's a good it's a good fishy kind of taste but let us seriously continue because i am uh i would like to eat series and what disney did to with moses ingram to essentially have her back um it's a
I don't want to see any more of Reva. I I hate her. I want her to die. I want her. I want her to die. We and in our, our EFAP, every frame of pause, the our podcast, right? We when we were watching her at the end after she got stabbed for the second time and survived when she was at Tatooine and and she was in the sand. I was like, oh, please die, please die, please die, please die. Oh, we were so ready for it, and then she just fucking didn't die because Reva is evil and she should be punished and probably killed. Uh, she is a scourge to the galaxy and she should be punished for all of her crimes against. Uh, uh, sentient life very disturbing um and these guys were screaming about what's disturbing i'm sorry what's what now moses ingram to essentially have her back um i don't want her back because that means the character of that i don't i don't give a shit about moses ingram i don't i don't want her back because that means that if she's back reva is back and i don't want to see any more of reva because her character's crap Unless she did stabbed a third time. Fuck it, we'll make it a contest. How, how many times can a character get stabbed in the chest with a lightsaber and live? Can we go for the can we go for the hat trick? Or I guess it wouldn't be a hat trick if it's a new... Would it have to be three in one episode or three in one season? Or, I don't know. It's very disturbing. Well, it's um, disturbing. And these guys were screaming about how Disney was calling all Star Wars fans racist. Eh, there is the implication that... There is certainly a massive implication that there's a lot of there's a huge racist element that exists because she gets messages and I'm sure the messages were nasty and at this point I'm just like I wonder how many of them were even earnest at this point because you know that trolls are totally aware that it will get this reaction that they can get the big Star Wars channels to tweet it out and the official the company to tweet it out and they can make this big fucking deal about it and it'll get and, and that's what they want they want this massive reaction Ugh. when disney or i maybe i just say the star wars the official star wars twitter account called all star wars fans racist when it didn't that was just their narrative who who did they did they though like, I'm not gonna... I, I know there's an implication that there's a lot of racists out there who just have to be put in their place because we have to show the world that we're against racism. And that's very that's very brave of you, Disney, for being against racism. Very good, taking Finn off that poster. You're, I know you're not racist at all. But um, I'm, I'm glad that you're very happy that Corporation did thing you like. Uh, I'm wondering how, how much it actually relates to reality, though. Because there's certainly... Cause, because... What happens is Disney puts out these messages and then we get called the people who do that, right? That's why it annoys us. I don't feel the need to have to tell my audience to not be racist because I don't think maybe you have a very racist audience and you have an audience where you constantly have to tell them to not be racist or else they'll slip into their habits or whatever it is. I don't feel my audience is like that. I'm a pretty, I think I, I, I'm myself. I think I have a pretty egalitarian bunch that watches me. Um, I consider myself pretty darn colorblind, uh, except for my jokes. They are they are definitely colorful. Um, but I don't, I don't know. Whenever this stuff happens, we get brought up. We get called racist. We get called sexist. We get called bigots, homophobes, transphobes, blah, 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 blah. It always gets tarnished by us. And part of the reason is because people like you will jump down that path. You, you want to take the you know, big corporation side... And you're going to go after the, the, you know, nerdrotic and drinker. And I, I've known them for a while. I don't believe them to be racist in any way. I think they're nice people. I think they're fun to hang out with. If you can actually show me some examples of them being racist, I would love to see those. Um, but I just don't believe little Star Wars simp channels like yours with your hearsay that these people are the problem. I don't believe you. I've been down this road before. I've been called a Nazi too many times because I didn't like The Last Jedi at this point. I'm I'm numb to it, and I know that it's nonsense, and you're going to have to prove otherwise because this is a grandiose claim that you're making. They're talking about Star Wars and Disney pushing a narrative. But we have four more minutes left. I don't know how much of this I'm going to sit through, honestly. But they are the ones clearly pushing a narrative. You don't think Disney's pushing a narrative? You don't you don't think that they're pushing a narrative because that's pretty clear. I'm not saying Star Wars and Disney don't have their own narrative. Oh, good, 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 good. I'm glad we glad we cleared that up. Excellent. Good on you. Good on you, Robert. Everybody technically has a narrative. I have a narrative. 
Yeah, yours is shit. But these guys clearly are pushing their narrative. But are you... Hard. Are you not... You're not... I think that... Are you not pushing your narrative hard? I mean, you started off... You started off this Kenobi review with the pushing of the narrative. That was your little... That was your little open zinger preview thing. So... I don't know, I feel like it's a little, a little hypocritical here. It's all right to push a narrative if it's a good one and if it's well supported by the facts and good reasoning. But yeah. And they've got a lot of people sold on it, unfortunately. I think it's I think it's generally a good thing that they have a lot of people sold on it. Right? Look at the comments of my videos. You see lots of people are defending them, and it's very di- yeah disturbing. Oh, it's disturbing. It's disturbing that these channels have people that will defend them. It's disturbing disturbing that's another word that i think is really kind of losing its umph is disturbing but disney and the star wars twitter are you gonna address any actual arguments or are you just gonna say that the racist account did not call all star wars fans racist they simply called out star wars fans and to ask them not to be racist (laughs) i didn't say they were racist i'm just telling them all to not be racist (laughs) Oh, I'm gonna admit that got a giggle out of me. Now they're not. Now my fans aren't racist. I just have to constantly tell my fans to not do racist things. There's, there is a difference, but there is technically a difference between those things. <laughs> I'm not calling men rapists. I'm just saying that you should constantly tell men that they shouldn't rape people. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's your narrative, right? Oh, that's funny. And bye them coming out and saying oh i thought he was i thought he was trying to do a ben shapiro i thought he was trying to do a ben shapiro voice because because he has the kind of this robert guy he has that kind of horrific nasally voice that i think if he tried he could probably do a decent ben shapiro voice i don't even maybe i can do it i'm not sure like, well i i watched star wars and honestly i didn't really like it I watched it with my wife, as you know, she's a doctor, and she's very good at watching Star Wars. I have strong opinions on Star Wars. I don't don't think I can do, I can't, I'd have to practice my Ben Shapiro. I'm I'm out of practice with my Ben Shapiro. By the way, Ben Shapiro has some hilarious Star Wars opinions. You should watch his like tier rankings of the Star Wars shows. It is, it is crazy. Some, oh, it's, it's very, very entertaining. We've covered him a couple times on every frame of pause. Um, it, those have been good episodes. <laughs> he is, he is ripe for discussion. I, I, when, when Ben Shapiro talks about Star Wars, consider me interested. I, I want to know what this guy thinks about Star Wars. Anyway, what, what are we talking about, Robert? That the Disney Star Wars fans are all getting called racist. They are the ones. They are calling all Star Wars fans racist. That's I I don't are they really? Dang, really? I had no idea. Can you really? Huh? Thing to understand. Ben Shapiro, neurotic, Ner- nerdrotic. Oh, I, I guess you're doing a. I guess you're doing a thing instead of uh, saying nerdrotic. You're you're saying neurotic. I like I like I like I like him. I think he's a cool guy. I think he's Gary's neat dude. Uh. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's a neat dude. Night. He's the, he's, there's a lot of hair in this image, by the way. There's a lot of hair in this image. You have um, the you, you have the Joker hair on the shirt, and then he's a pretty he's a pretty hairy guy. He's got the big beard and everything. There's a lot of hair in this image, I must say. Critical drinker. Oh, critical drinker. Midnight's oh. Edge. Midnight's Edge. Uh. I'm not familiar. I think I'm not too familiar with Midnight's Edge. Um, Midnight's Edge. Uh, what it what it, does he have something to say about Midnight's Edge Kenobi? Let's see. Yes, Star Wars Obi Wan. Yes, Star Wars Obi Wan Kenobi really is the Last Jedi all over again. Eh, some parallels. Uh, pa, 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 the Moses Ingram deflection. Yeah, uh, blaming fan. Yeah, I could totally see why they want to take a that they want to offload a lot because it's very tactical, right? If you're Disney. And you can create this big narrative that everybody's being racist against Moses Ingram. Then whenever you whenever you criticize her, whenever you criticize I say her as in the character, whenever you criticize Riva or the writing or anything, it's so easy for everyone to just say, "Oh yeah, this is just the racism that Disney was talking about." 
Um, yeah. Looks like he doesn't like a lot of Disney Star Wars, so I guess you think that's... Yeah. I'm sure I covered more during that time. By pushing that narrative, they are the ones calling Star Wars fans racist. Oh? Do you explain. That's what they're doing. That's not what the Star Wars Twitter account did. That's what they are doing. All right. Can you explain how that works? Because I don't personally see the... I don't... Again, I'm will, I'm open to be told different, but I don't see it myself. I would like to hear the explanation for why you've said that. And that's a problem. I agree if it's true. And that's the thing. Moses Ingram... Get oh, you're not going to explain why. You're, ju you're just saying that all of these channels are calling all Star Wars fans racist. Okay, well, consider me... You know what? In the presence of such biting evidence, consider myself, regardless, uh, unconvinced. Getting racist messages is a problem, and she shouldn't get them. Sure. But you know what's a bigger problem? What's a bigger problem? What is a bigger problem? I know. I know. What, what, what's a bigger problem? Is it... Oh, oh yeah, this is the part you said at the beginning. Yeah, we've already been over this. Yeah. Assholes like the quartering... Ugh. Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro. Neurotic, neurotic and critical drinker. Critical drinker. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe saying it's bad. Dude, they don't need to. Do, we all agree that it's bad. Who, do, who are you talking to when you say that it's bad? Who, who are you talking to? Are you are you talking to the racists who send the messages? Like maybe if I if I uh, if I hear my favorite YouTuber telling me that it's racist to send racist messages, I will stop sending racist messages. I feel like that's probably not going to be the case. Because again, I don't feel like I have to tell. Because I assume I am in the similar company of you know Nerdrotic and the Fandom Menace and all of them, right? Um, I don't think that my audience is so racist i have to constantly tell them to not be racist <laughs> like there are some like there's some dog on a leash so to speak and they're just gonna break off if i don't temper their their moods with my anti-racist rhetoric i just feel like we all i feel like everyone in my audience we all pretty much on the same page that racism is a it's a bad actual racism just so we're clear but defending it i want to point Defending racism? I would love to hear where they defend racism. I would legitimately like to see where they defend racism. Because, again, if you don't... If you don't show me, then I might not be convinced. Point out, Ben Shapiro and yeah. the quartering yeah. definitely didn't say it's bad. Wow, they didn't say that racism is bad. Can you believe that? Can they believe... Can you believe that they didn't say that racism is bad? They probably think, therefore, that racism is bad. I haven't talked about how climate change is bad in this video. You can, you will probably logically assume that I think climate change is not bad. It only logically follows that damn dog sitting at his desk. He wants the world to be hotter and for all the gays to go away because he hates the blacks or the whatever. Jesus Christ. Quartering actually even said the messages weren't even fucking racist. Uh... Some of them probably weren't. I don't know which which messages. Some of them probably weren't actually racist. I mean, let's be frank. You 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 fucking lefties are always crying wolf on the racism and the bigotry and the transphobia stuff. You're always fucking crying wolf on it. I bet a lot of those supposed racist messages aren't actually racist. And I'm not excusing the ones that are. Of course, I'm just saying that I think a lot of the ones that are called racist are not actually racist, which is a fine thing to say if it's an accurate representation of what those messages are. But maybe, I, maybe this is where I have to throw it in. Don't be racist, everyone, because being racist is bad. You should treat everyone as individuals, not as representatives of their race. You should have a, an egalitarian racial mindset. You shouldn't see color. You should treat everyone by the merits of their actions and their character, and not by their skin color. Or, or is being colorblind the new racist? I can't, I can't remember. The rules are, they are shifty. But Ben Shapiro and Quartering definitely didn't say the messages were even bad. At least, did they not? I, I'd love to, I'd love to hear what you're referring to in particular. Neurotic and critical drinker had the common decency to look at those messages and say, "Yeah, that was fucking bad." Okay. They still fucking defended them, though. Did they? Wait, they said they were bad, but they defended them. How did they defend them? Explain this to me. Oh, show me. They still followed me. the line about, "Oh, Disney does some racism in China." Yeah. 
which is something we didn't even fucking talk about when it first came out, but we're going to talk about it now because it... Yeah, they did. They did talk about it. What are you talking about? When when they did the film po... Are you insane? For someone who has this hate boner for these people, surely you know that when the posters happened for the Rise of Skywalker and whatnot, and they took Finn off the po... They, they, well, they didn't technically take him out. They sized him down considerably because the Chinese people are... um. Let's say they're not as progressive as you and I. And so they they immensely shrunk down Finn's appearance in the poster for the Chinese audience to make it more marketable. Yeah, you bet they talked about it. We all talked about it. It's something that we still reference to this day because it shows that all of this posturing and grandstanding for Disney, it only goes so deep. We did this, we, we had the part two for this when they were thanking the Chinese concentration camps where they were keeping Muslims when they were shooting Milan. Like, D Disney's evil, my dude. They're an evil corporation who talks to people like you out of one side of their mouth and you eat it up hook, line, and sinker like the good consumer fish you are. And on the other side, they're like, eh, this is China, it's fine, whatever. We'll take out the, well, maybe we'll take out the gay kiss, and maybe we'll hide the black person on the poster, and eh, maybe we'll say thanks for the you know, letting us film near the concentration camps for our Milan movie. It's fine, don't worry about it, whatever. I mean, we're, we're literally gonna not have, you know, certain characters be in movies because we don't want to take the spotlight away from the, the females, which is what they did in Black Widow whose exclusive promotional merchandising popcorn buckets you display so proudly behind you. Remember when they did that? We can't have men in Black Widow. We can't have the other Avengers in Black Widow because they're men and we, wanna, we don't want to take the spotlight away from the girl power. Please, come on. This shit affects storytelling. This shit affects storytelling. <sighs> it's our fucking narrative. Something we clearly don't give a flying... You're such a good ally. You should be very proud. You're, you're a very good consumer ally. You have your popcorn bucket and your Funky Pops. They're, they're not Funky. They're close. You have your BB-8. You're fighting the good fight. Good on you, man. You're such a good ally. You're such a good ally. You should feel proud. Good on you. Fuck about, but we're going to bring it up now. To no, no they, they talked about it a lot. We all talked about it a lot. We still talk about it. I'm I'm shocked that you guys didn't talk about it as much as you did because you should have. You really should have. This should have pissed. This should have pissed you off, right? I hope it did piss you off. Pissed you off. <laughs> to distract from the fact that Disney didn't call all fans racist, Disney called out racist within the community. They, they yeah, they're right. We're not saying the fans are racist. We just feel the need to really make sure our fans know that they shouldn't be racist. Just, just, just yeah, it's, it's technically a difference. You're right. There is technically a difference between those two things. And we're offended at that because those racists are either us or our fan community. Oh, no, you still don't understand. And I don't think you can. I don't think you're complex mentally enough to do it. So, as I've said before, whenever Disney says something like this, we get the blame for it, regardless of its actual merits. Whenever anything like this pops up, whenever I, whenever we criticize Reva, whenever we criticize Ray, whenever we criticize, what's her face, um, Rose Tico, whenever we criticize Finn, whenever we criticize anyone who is diverse, then what? What do we get called? We get called Nazis, fascists, racists, sexists homophobe we the whole nine yards of ists and isms we get called every time and if that happens to us can, can you put yourself in our position and at least entertain with some level some tiny modicum of good faith can you see why maybe it sort of eh, annoys us can you see maybe from our perspective just a little bit can you at least, I don't, I'm not saying you have to agree with it. I mean, you think Kenobi's very, very good, for fuck's sake. I don't give a shit about your opinion. But man, can, can you at least maybe see where we're coming from just a little bit? Can, can you let the spirit of righteousness temper itself just a moment to maybe see the other side? And I'm sorry, if you want to court racist into your community, go fuck yourself. If you, I'm sorry, 
go fuck yourself. That's so strange. I'm not. I don't think I court racists. I mean, there. I'm sure statistically there has to be at least a few racists in my community. There's got to be a few racists in every community, right? I hope not. The less, the better. And it, no, even better. I hope. Guess what? If you're racist, come over to my channel. I will de-racify you, racistify you. I will. I want you to come in here so I can explain. I can give you the good news of egalitarianism and colorblindness. I will show you. I will. I will teach you the ways to judge people based on their individual merits and their character and their moral positions and who they are as people, and not their race. I will convert them. Send them my way. And I will fix them. I will fix him and all of them. I don't care if they're white and they hate black or black and they hate white. Send them all my way and I'll fix them. I will cure them of their racisms. I will turn them into good egalitarians. Good liberal egalitarians. And we shall go forth loving all people of all colors and sizes and, and hairstyles and... and fashion senses and sexualities and all will be wonderful and we will make a rainbow world of magic and it will be great i will fix them i do not want them to fester in their holes deep underground where they get worse and worse and worse no i want to show them a better way i want to show them a better way i don't want you part of this community because <laughs> you're gonna make people racist against white people <laughs> Uh, fucking racists get out <laughs> come to me and I will fix you all of the racists who have left your channel come to mine and I will fix you I will show you a better way I will show you a better way but that's the problem with them they are happy to have racists in their viewership are they though are they are they though I don't think they are I don't think they are. Because I'm like, I'm quasi joking, right? Like, I really do think that the way to change a lot of people's minds is that they first have to hear you, right? If I want to change the mind of someone, and by the way, I've gotten these emails before. In fact, it's not terribly uncommon for me to get an email from someone saying, thank you so much. You've helped me. I was in a dark place. I was in a worse spot and I let depression or my anger or anxiety or whatever get the best of me. And I wasn't a good person in certain ways. And you and you know, all the people you hang out with, you, you helped really kind of show me that I don't have to have these attitudes and that there's important things that I need to learn. And I get these messages, you know. But in order to get these messages, they have to hear me first. They have to be here and listen to me first. In their community. Something I'm not happy with. Something Disney Star Wars. I am thrilled Every, now, of course, I'm not going to know when it happens for the most amount of time. You're not going to know when you change a lot of people's minds because they just change their minds and go about their way, right? What a wonderful thing it is to change the mind of a person who's like legitimately actually like racist or sexist, right? And you change their opinion and you take them down the, the, the enlightened centrist path when you tell them, oh, no, no, no. Both men and women can be shit, I'll have you know. Both blacks and whites can be horrible. Everyone can be horrible, but everyone can also be good. Let us discuss how you separate the wheat from the chaff in a way that is not related to their immutable characteristics, but by their decisions. By your fruits, ye shall know them. By their fruits, ye shall know them. Isn't happy with, and good on them. I'm not thrilled with Disney. Disney's an evil corporation. Hey, good for you. Glad you're buying up all that merch. Glad you're buying those popcorn buckets. Glad you're buying the Wallies and BB-8s and your Star Wars Baby Grogu Boba Fett shirts. They're evil. I'm going to buy their shit. You see, here's the, maybe, here's the difference between you and me. Now, I'm not as, of course, I'm not as woke of an ally as you are. I think that Disney is evil for a lot of the race and gender related stuff that they do. I think they, I think they court with legitimate horrific governments. Um, the, dare I say, the Nazis of our day. And I don't really appreciate that. And so, as a result, eh, I'm not too keen on giving them my money. So, eh, so, well, that's fine. That's all right. That's fine, right? No one, I'm not, I'm actually not pushing you that hard. I feel like we all have our line. I'm sure there's a lot of unsavory companies and I bought products for them, of course. But I feel like someone who makes this such a big deal for you... I don't know, displaying the merchandise of the evil corporation, it does, I don't know, maybe, 
maybe tone down on all the Star Wars merch and Disney merch, if that's the case, you know? We've been over it many times. But you what? know what? what? Good on Sorry. them for calling out racist. Good on them to say, hey, you know that racist stuff? Don't do that. <laughs> we already know. We're adults. We already know not to do that. I, I say, uh... Fucking milk toast message as fuck. And these guys are... Milk toast messages. Like what? Offended by it. Because they want to be racist or they want to court racist. It's... No, we, they want to be racist. Like, they, they legitimately are trying to be racist, but they just don't know how to do it. They've heard about it, and it sounds just wonderful to them, and they just don't know how to be racist. They're, like, begging people, please, how do I be racist? I don't know. You have to show me. Ah, I want to be racist, but I just can't. It's one of the two. Of course, it's just one of the two. There are no other options. This is a dichotomous proposition for which I have covered all of the potential bases. And it's unacceptable, which no. is why I feel it's important to call out these fuckers. Yeah. You should. Oh, that's it. Produced by one, two, three, four, five. You have five producers? You have five producers? Gems Art Studio? That's a studio. You have four producers in a whole studio. Anything else in this video? Ba -da, ba -da. Oh, you didn't have the same you don't you didn't have the same font as your previous thing. Like you have this, right? And it's one font, and then when you go to the next one, it's a totally different font and everything. Is there anything else left? How's an end? Oh, no. Ah. Don't go there. Ah. <sighs> well, that was bad. I am hungry. I'm going to go get something to eat, maybe a snack. Maybe I'll go walk down to the Waffle House and I'll have a I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to have. It's it's midnight, baby. It's tw it's almost 1. It's 12:40 a.m. and I'm hyped up. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm going to end this video and I'm going to go through and if there's any editing that needs to be done, I'm going to take care of that puppy and I'm going to come home fat and happy and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to drink more water and I'm going to play RimWorld or something. I don't even know. Maybe I'll log on to Guild Wars 2 and open some chests I don't know that was fun that was fun don't send this person angry messages of course don't do any of that stuff obligatory do not harass the person to do the thing I disavow all harassment of the man who bought the Marvel Studios Black Widow exclusive promotional popcorn bucket I guess he thinks that it's more important to... Because he's showing the Scarlett Johansson side. He's not showing the Taskmaster side. Which makes sense. Because I think out of the two characters, Taskmaster is the most embarrassing. Though it is close. Oh, I guess this, this one's metal. That's neat that they're not even plastic. It's cool. Popcorn buckets. Those are something to collect. I guess if you're going to collect stuff... Popcorn buckets aren't too bad. You could put something um, maybe like three-fourths of the way up, like a box or something, and then you could put another one on top of it so that they save a little space and you could sort of see them. What an embarrassing movie. What an embarrassing movie that was. And what an embarrassing video, but we had fun. You know what? I'm not going to rescind my dislike. I did dislike this video. I think it was very poorly argued. But you did get a few laughs out of me, so that's cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. You have a pleasant morning, afternoon, or night whenever you watch it. Bye-bye.